One other part in electromagnetics or electrostatics that we use very often uh, without probably understanding that it originated electromagnetics is the concept of energy. Um, and uh, uh, the, we can, we'll st I will start defining this, I'll follow the same lines uh, used in the book. And the book starts by first bringing one charge, Q1, and then bringing a second charge, Q2, and then bringing a third charge, Q3, and then try to calculate what is the energy required to put this system together. Remember that these charges, they may rebel against one another, and when you move them together, you are actually putting, putting energy. And when you release these charges, you put them in motion, they will, uh, they will start to move in a certain way, uh, they will release their kinetic energy, they will start to, uh, to uh, expand this energy that they store. So, uh, first we'll assume in the beginning we had no charges. So the first thing we did, we brought a charge Q1 from infinity to its location in the, in the parameter space, or in X, Y, Z space. Um, because there are no other charges, there was no work done to bring Q1 from infinity. There, were, there are no other charges in its neighborhood that's resisting this movement. So Q1 was put in its place. Any other charge, any other point in the neighborhood of Q1 will have a potential of due to Q1 over Q over 4 by epsilon R1. What is the definition of this potential? This means it is, it is a work done to, to, um, to, uh, to, bring, uh, to take a unit charge uh, with the electric field, work done with the electric field to take a unit charge from the point B to infinity, or, this is, this is the first definition here, or the second definition is to, to bring as a, sec, uh, a unit charge from infinity to the point B against the electric field. They are both equal, they are both equivalent. So now we, we, uh, we managed to bring one charge, Q1, and uh, we know that because of this charge here, any other, uh, any other point around it will have a potential. Will have a potential, which means that if we take a unit charge, move it from this point to infinity, there will be a work spent by the electric field. Now, the second step in this derivation is that we bring a charge Q from infinity to a distance R to 1 from the first charge Q1. So it, Q1 was there, we brought Q2 from infinity, okay? Because we are bringing Q2 against the field uh, imposed by Q1, we can say that the, um, from the definition of the voltage, we can see that the work spent to bring Q2 to its location relative to Q1 is equal to Q2 multiplied by the charge over the work per unit charge, which is the potential. So this is here, this is a potential at the location of charge Q2 due to charge Q1. So R to 1 is simply uh, the vector or the length from Q1 to Q2. This has to be very clear. So, uh, so we have here, this is uh, Q1 here. We brought Q2 to infinity from infinity, and the Q2 now is located at a distance of R to 1. And because we brought it again is the field of Q1, there was a work done. What is the value of this work done from the definition of the voltage? The voltage means work done per unit charge, but we brought a charge of Q2. Then we multiply Q2 by the potential, and we get the total work done. We call this potential here V21. V21. It is a potential at the location of the charge Q2 due to the charge Q1. And the work here, if you see the unit, because you are multiplying column by volts, it's going to be joule. This is the units here. And it doesn't really matter whether you bring first uh, Q1 or bring first Q2. The, the result will be the same. It's Q1, Q2 over 4 by epsilon R21 because R21 is equal to R12. The distance between charge 2 and the second charge and first charge is the same as the distance from the first charge to the second charge. Now, now we are all set to, um, to bring a third charge. So we can see now there is work done. To bring Q2 because we are, we are bringing it from infinity against the field of Q1. The potential at any point in the space is simply the sum of the potential due to uh, Q1 and Q2. This is not that difficult to understand. We agreed that superposition do apply. Now what will happen if we bring a charge Q3, we bring it from infinity, so Q3 is here, we bring it from infinity to a certain location uh, at, a, at a distance R13 or R31, actually called R31 from Q1, and R32 from Q2. So this is from here to here, it's called R31. This is from here to here, it's called R32. Then, uh, what is the work done in bringing this charge? Where we brought Q3 from infinity. Again, it's the field of both charges. 
from the definition of the voltage. The voltage is a work done per unit charge. Then the work done to bring Q3 will be equal to Q3 multiplied by the total potential at the location of Q3. And this is equal to the potential due to the third charge. R3, R31 is the distance between a third charge and first charge. R32 is the distance between third charge and second charge. So this will be equal to Q3 V31 plus V32. And it does not really matter the order, doesn't matter again. This is equal to W13 plus W23. Now, what is the total energy now to, to build together this system? When we brought Q1, there was no cost because there was no other charge. When we brought Q2, there was a cost. We had to put some, put, put some work in order to put Q2 close to Q1. And then we brought Q3, we have to bring it against the field of Q1 and Q2. Then the total, total energy spent is equal to W21 plus W31 plus W32. Energy spent to bring Q2 close to Q1. And energy spent to bring Q3 in the vicinity of Q1 and Q2. And we already derived these expressions here. Okay, so we can simply simplify that. This will be here uh, Q2 multiplied by V21. Uh, we, we use this notation V21 to indicate the voltage at the location of the charge Q2 due to the charge Q1. V31, the voltage at the location of the charge Q3 due to the charge Q1, and so on. So when you put all this together, this gives you the total electric energy of the system. The total electric energy we had to put in this system to bring these charges together. And uh, of course, if you let loose of these charges, you start to move uh, very similar to when you take a car up in a ramp and then you let, let, it, let it go down, it will start to, uh, to go down on its own energy. It could convert the stored energy into kinetic energy. Very similar to what's happening here. Now, we can repeat the same steps exactly. We can first bring Q3 in the beginning. When you bring Q3 and the Q2 and Q1 were not there, there is no energy but, uh, spent to bring Q3. And then when you bring Q2, Q2 will bring it, you will bring it from infinity against the field of Q3. And then you bring Q1 against the field of both Q2 and Q3. If you put this again in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in its own form, you get that this is W23. Energy spent to bring Q2 against the field of Q3. And then W13 and W12. Energy spent to bring Q1 against the field of Q, Q2 and Q3. And we have the expression for that. This work is nothing but the charge multiplied by the potential. So again, this we can simplify into Q2 multiplied by V23. We can simplify this Q1 multiplied by V13. Multiply this one Q1 multiplied by V12. Now, if you, if you sum the result from the previous slide, this is electric energy, and the other electric energy, the RG should be the same. The, the, the energy stored in the system does not depend on the order we bring, we bring it through which the charges. If you sum them together, you will find that Q1 is multiplied by V12 plus V13. This is the, char this is the voltage V1 at the location of the charge Q1. So it's a contribution coming from Q2 plus contribution coming from Q3. The same thing is happening here. This is Q2 multiplied by V21 plus V23. This is this is actually in total V2. This is the total potential at the charge at the location of the charge Q2. Potential due to the first charge Q1. Potential due to the third charge Q3. The same thing is happening here. Q3, you multiply it by V3. This is what we call V3. It's the total potential at Q3. It is the potential due to the first charge plus potential to the second charge. And because we sum both energies, you get 2we so now we get that was a very interesting expression that for this 3d charge system the electric the potential energy or the electric energy that we had to spend in order to put this system together is one half summation qivi where vi is a voltage evaluated at the ith charge due to the other charges and of course this this derivation can be expanded or you can you can try to generalize it to the case where you have any charges in that case you multiply every charge by the potential at, at its location where this potential is a contribution of all potentials coming from all charges except itself and of course by doing that we are able to obtain the expression for the electric field so just to remind you of this one here this is a formula this is the final formula we'll be using and of course if you have a continuous um, system uh, here we have a charge multiplied by its potential we can do the same exactly rho v dv will give you a differential charge 
and V is the, is the potential at this char at the location of this charge. So if you have a distribution of charges, this expression here holds that the electric field is also one half the integral over the volume rho V V D volume. Remember that rho V D V is DQ. It is the charge at the location of this differential element. And when you multiply by V, then you are giving you are getting DW. DW as a, a differential differential work and for this differential element. Consider now an example. Uh, we have here. Uh, I would like to calculate the energy of a system of two identical charges, uh, Q1 and Q2. They have the same value here, 10 to the minus 12. They are located at minus 1, 0 and 0 millimeter, and 1, 0 and 0 millimeter. We would like to know what is the work necessary to bring a charge Q3 minus 1, 10 to the minus 12 column from infinity to the location, to the origin, to the location 0, 0, and 0. This here should be clear that this is here is the, uh, is the origin, okay? 0, 0, and 0. So, um, again, for the two charges, it's very easy. One of them will bring it from infinity with no resistance because there was no other charge. The other one will see, I would see, will see some, uh, uh, we have to move it against the, the electric field, so we have to put some work. And in that case, the work is equal to Q2 multiplied by the potential at the location of Q2 due to the charge Q1. So I start by drawing a simple diagram. So we have here two charges. Q1 and Q2, this one here and this one here, they are both at a distance of one of, uh, I think it's two millimeters from the origin. Um, and I would like to first, to find first for the first part, Q1, again, as I said, is brought to its position uh, against Q2. You can assume that, of course, not a big deal. Or, or Q2 is brought to its position from infinity against the field of Q1. Both are fine. So, but you have only one expression here, which is Q1, Q2 over 4 by epsilon r. This will give you the total energy spent to bring this system together. So we start to substitute. Q1 is 10 to the minus 12. Q2 is 10 to the minus 12. This will give me 10 to the minus 24. 4 by epsilon, 1 over 36 by 10 to the minus 9. The distance between them, I think every one of them was 1 millimeter from the origin. So this would be 2 millimeters. So I put here 2 and I put on the numerator 10 to the power 3. And if you simplify all this, this will cancel this one to give you 9. 9 you divide it by 2, you get 4.5. Uh, 10 to the minus 9 will add here. This will give you 10 to the 12, 10 to the minus 24. Then you get 10 to the minus 12 joule. So we know here that the work needed to bring the charge Q2 from infinity against the field of Q1 or the charge Q1 from infinity against the field of Q2 and put it at a distance of 2 millimeter is given by this expression 4.5 10 to the minus 12 joule. Now, if I bring another charge Q3 from infinity, I am bringing it against the field of the other two charges. We know that the uh, work done per charge at the location of the charge Q3 is Q1 over 4 by epsilon R13. This is the work needed to bring a unity charge from infinity to the location at a distance R13 from a charge Q1. Again, similar for Q2. We can say that at location of Q3, we can say that the potential is given by this one. This is the this is the work done required to buy, to bring a unity charge from infinity to a location R32 from a charge Q2. But of course, we're not bringing a unity charge. We're bringing Q3. This one I multiply by Q3. Notice here that uh, the, this, po this point was both at the origin. So it was at a distance of 1 millimeter from both the charges. So I can simply say that R31 is equal to R32 is equal to 1 millimeter. So 1, 10 to minus 3 here meter in this case. We substitute uh, for epsilon for the Q to the minus 12 uh, for uh, for the charge Q3 it's a negative one and you should be able to get the answer. If you substitute here uh, Q3 is negative which is fine. This is Q1. This is Q2. This is uh, R1. This is R, uh, this is R31. This is R32. Uh, you multiply it to the minus 12 and then uh, cancel things out a little bit. You get here 9, you get here from 9 multiply by 2, you get 18. And here, these two will cancel with this one to give you 10 to the minus 12. Then here you have minus 18 to the minus 12 joule. What does this mean? Because you are bringing a negative charge, and negative charges naturally attract positive charges. So the, the external force was not really putting any, any work. The work is actually was negative, because this is exactly equivalent to pushing a car down a ramp. The car is actually going its own. It doesn't need any any uh, energy to uh, to 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 uh, to reach its direction. So here, this explains why we have this negative answer.